morning, everyone. Uh, great to see the kids here today. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Welcome to Norristown. Uh, welcome to the 23rd anniversary celebration of the Christopher Columbus uh, Monument, obviously here on Columbus Day. And we'd like to thank everyone. We have a great, great crowd here today. Uh, we do have some dignitaries in attendance that I would like to single out and thank uh, for being here. State Representative Kate Harper is here. <laughs> Commissioner Bruce Castor. <laughs> Nancy Becker, Recorder of Deeds. <laughs> Joanne Olczewski, the Jury Commissioner, is with us. We have two council people from here in the home borough of Norristown. We have Olivia Brady and Bill Caldwell. We also have a few candidates that are uh, running for office uh, here today. We have Dr. Phil Mandato, who's running for coroner. And we have Steve Tolbert, who is running for commissioner. Obviously, um, this is the first year in 23 years that someone is not present with us today, and I'll say a little more about that uh, later in the program, but Hank Sisko is not here with us today. Uh, and like I said, I'll say a little bit more about that later. Uh, so now, if everybody would please rise as we uh, post the colors. To do that, we have the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department Color Guard, along with the Father Joseph C. Tomko, uh, Knights of Columbus, Commander Richard Whiteup. All right, we will now have Joanne Olczewski uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Buongiorno. On such a beautiful day in Norristown. I'm so happy to be here. Usually my Uncle Hank, Hank Sisko, has this honor. Uh, unfortunately, he could not be here. But I wanted just to tell you a little bit about the Pledge of Allegiance very quickly. The Pledge of Allegiance was written by Francis Bellamy in 1892. It was on the 400th anniversary of the discovery of America. It was written especially for the Columbia Exposition. And the first time it was ever recited, it was recited by more than 6,000 school children, and I'm so happy to see so many young children here today. So, be that as it may, it's now more than 100 years, and here we are, and if you will, the flag is over in this direction, if you would please join me in saluting our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If, every, if everyone would remain standing, Cameron Chandler will now lead us in the National Anthem. Followed by the Italian National Anthem.
We have also with us today uh, State Representative Matt Bradford yes, and State Representative Tim Briggs. Uh, I'd like to now introduce Monsignor Charles San Germano of Holy Savior Parish here in Norristown to do the invocation. Sea, Christopher Columbus, and our beloved Norristown, at this beautiful monument built and cared for by our own citizens, teach us also to imitate his virtues, his faith, which impelled him to put all his undertakings under your protection, his courage, which caused him to face adversity and the unknown with a firm sense of purpose, and his humility, which enabled him to face the misunderstandings that came to him with the peace of mind of a clear conscience. As our many friends and fellow citizens join in those of us who are of Italian, who are Italian Americans in this celebration, which has always held a special place in our country, we ask you to fill our hearts with a twofold sense of gratitude and purpose. Gratitude for he whom we honor this day, and gratitude for these great United States, which have always held him in special honor. Purpose as we are called in a special way these days to appreciate this great land in which we live. 
so that following and imitating the virtues of the great Columbus, we might show ourselves to be worthy sons and daughters, not only of the great admiral from Genoa, but also of this great country in which we live. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Crandall Jones, did he sneak in? Now, I'd like to ask Olivia Brady to come forward and uh, welcome everyone to Norristown. Good morning, all. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And good morning to the children, the future of our town and the future of our world. Thank you so much for being here. I just want to thank you so much for being here. Again, my name is Olivia Brady. I'm an at-large councilwoman for Norris Town Municipal Council. I'm here with Bill Caldwell, Second District Council Representative. We bring you greetings from Norris Town Council and welcome to Norris Town, wonderful municipality. We have a wonderful monument that's lasting 23 years. What a what a great tradition! So thank you all for being here. Okay, now on to our keynote speaker. Each year we uh, try to get someone who represents um, what really immigrating from Italia it is all about, who's made it come to America, their family, and uh, made a success of their life here in America. And today uh, we are especially joined by Emil Giordano, who is a judge of the Court of Common Pleas in Northampton County, Pennsylvania. He's been a judge since 2004. He currently is the administrative judge for the Orphan Court, Orphans Court in Northampton County, and he presides over various civil and criminal procedures as well. He's a graduate of Bethlehem Catholic High School here in Pennsylvania, Moravian College, and Villanova Law School. He was admitted to practice law in Pennsylvania in 1986. In 1985, Judge Giordano began his career as an assistant district attorney in Broome County, New York. That's outside Binghamton, if those of you, I actually had a case that took me to Binghamton when I was a district attorney. Uh, in 1987, he decided to return to the Lehigh Valley area where he worked uh, in private practice with a law firm uh, until he was elected to the bench in 1988. Throughout his years of pri private practice, he served as a solicitor to many municipalities in the Lehigh Valley area, and he's also served to, as solicitor to many charitable and nonprofit organizations as well. Judge Giordano is a member of the Pennsylvania Conference of State Trial Judges, the American Bar Association, and the Pennsylvania Bar Association, as well as the Northampton County Bar Association. Judge Giordano is also on the ballot this November for the Pennsylvania Superior Court, which is the statewide appellate court. Judge Giordano is married to his wife, Tina. They have two sons, Joseph and Caden, and they are members of the Notre Dame of Bethlehem Parish in Northampton County. With that, I'd like to welcome Judge Giordano. Good morning, everyone. I was going to give my entire presentation in Italian, but I wasn't able to do it. Buongiorno a tutti. I'd like to thank J.P. Mascaro for this wonderful opportunity to address you this morning. When I was an attorney, I did some work for, for Ms. Carroll and Company. I have to say, they're among my favorite clients. And while I told, he told you my name is Emil Giordano, it's not my real name. My real name is Emidio Antonio Leonardo Giordano. So like a lot of you, my name is Tony. And, and everyone in my family has the same name. My father, Joseph. My brother, Joseph. My son is Joseph, and my nephew is Joseph. Now, my mom and dad came here in 1955. They were born in Italy. They were farmers. My mom lived in a little town outside of Naples called Ligiano. My dad came from Forchia, which is right outside of Caserta. And they came on a boat. And I can assure you there was no Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse of that boat taking autographs in the morning with them. They moved to Brooklyn. Now, 
My mom moved in with a, an aunt she had met once in her entire life. And she lived in her basement. And she went to work in a sewing machine factory in Brooklyn, New York. My dad, he moved in with a cousin. I'm sorry, I moved away from the microphone. Moved, moved in with his cousin, who he didn't really know. He went to work in a shoe factory. They met when they were in night school, learning to speak English. I was born in 1959 in Brooklyn, New York. My parents, they were always worked hard. They were both union people, and on the weekend, they always doing extra things to earn money. I can remember, as a kid, they would buy hair, those blow dryers, and they would go to the flea markets to try to sell them. My mom and my dad, my dad worked concrete on the weekend to try to supplement his income, and they're always trying to provide a better life for me, and my sister, and my brother. Neither of them went to high school. I, to, I went to law school, my sister went to medical school, and my brother got his MBA. That's because America is a great country. They moved us here. They saved money. And, and they moved here at Bethlehem 1972. But before that, I have to tell you, for those of you who are Italian, I can remember being nine years old at home watching TV. And my mom came home. I'm watching TV. She walks around and goes, you should get a job. I said, I said, Mom, I'm nine years old. How am I going to get a job? She goes, you go, go to work for yourself. Start a business. So I can tell you, at nine years old, my mom and dad had me selling Christmas cards. Remember back then, it was a big deal to have your name on the inside of the cards? I used to sell them, and then I was a paper boy. Then we moved to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania in 1972. They had saved their money. They opened the pizza shop. And while I went to Bethlehem Catholic High School, Moravian College, and Villanova Law School, my real education life came working with my mom and dad every day after school and on the weekends. And I can't tell you it was fun. And those of you who worked in the family business know, and I'm looking at him for a reason, <laughs> it's not fun. It's obligation. When the other kids were going away on the weekends or going on trips and spring break, I was in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, working in the pizza shop. But it taught me the value of hard work and obligation to family and how to save money. We as Italians know that the success in life, education, you work hard, and you save money. And Italians have contributed to America in so many ways. And so I did a little bit of research before I came here today. Because I was, I was thinking about who I was going to talk about. But we talk about early baseball players in this country, the great ones. Joe DiMaggio, the Italian. Yogi Berra, Billy Martin. And let's not forget Mike Piazza and Tommy Lasorda here from Norristown. We've had great actors, Joe Pesci, Tony Danza, Rodolfo Valentino, and Maria Bello, she's here from Norristown also. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Bruce Springsteen, he's Italian, he's not from Norristown though. Uh, in football we have Joe Montana, Vinda Testaverde, and Steve Bono. Steve Bono played in the NFL, he's from Norristown. And I know everyone thinks, well, it doesn't think that basketball is an Italian sport, but it is. Let me tell you, John Calipari, Jim Valvano, P.J. Carnesica, Joe Colangelo, Raleigh Massimino, my favorite, and Gino Aremia, right here from Norristown. And in writing, we have Jerry Spinelli, right here from Norristown. In law, we had Anton Scalia, Samuel Alito, who stood on the Supreme Court, and Judge Vincent Cirillo from Norristown, who sat on the Pennsylvania Superior Court. And most importantly, hundreds and thousands and millions of Italian Americans who got up every day and went to work to earn a living and support their families. That is our heritage, and that is the heritage of Christopher Columbus. Doing what is right every single day, whether you want to do it or not, going to work, saving money, and providing for your family. Today, much like St. Patrick's Day when we're all Irish, today we're all Italian. We have much better food, I have to tell you. Uh, but our culture is one that values hard work and determination like the Irish culture. As Italians, we are proud of our Italian heritage. But we are equally as proud of being Americans. When Christopher Columbus 
sailed the ocean blue in 1492. He could have never foreseen such a great country and such a great place where hard work and determination, no matter what your background and what your culture, can bring you so much. I am very grateful for my parentage, for my nationality, but I am even more grateful to be have born in this great country. Grazie a tutti. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you. you all laugh a little. Uh, but unfortunately, like I said earlier, today is the first time in 23 years that Hank is not with us. So God willing, next year Hank will be back here to entertain. But I want to point out that we wouldn't be here for the first year if it wasn't for Hank Sisko. And before you leave today, there's a plaque on the wall here honoring Hank for his efforts in bringing this monument here to Norristown. And one of the paragraphs on that plaque says that without Hank's zeal for, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong, it's a very special individual unequivocally committed to his family, friends, and the Norristown community. And anyone who knows Hank knows that that's especially true. And Hank uh, today is home with his wife, Dolores, um, who um, is about to be taken with the Lord um, to a special place. So Hank couldn't be here today, and he wanted to send his wishes to everyone here, and thank you all for coming, and he promised me he would be here uh, next year. But instead of uh, Hank's closing remarks, why don't we bow our head and say a prayer uh, for Dolores Sisko. Now we ask Monsignor San Germano to come forward uh, and do the benediction. I will tell you a quick, funny Hank story. I'm, I cannot be as good as he would be at this point, <clears throat> but as JP mentioned, Hank's wife unfortunately is dying, and he's been a very faithful husband, especially in these years when she has um, been afflicted with Alzheimer's. And last week, a week ago Saturday, I was called to anoint her. And, of course, those are always very sad situations, and she has the blessing of being at home and surrounded by loved ones. And so I went in the house and gave her the sacraments, and there were so many people around, and it was very sad and very beautiful. And as I left, I, I went, of course, to, to say a special word to Hank. Uh, and we exchanged a few words, and then he said, for everyone to hear, now, Monsignor, don't forget Columbus Day to be there, 11.15. Uh, so everyone was kind of sad and teary-eyed, but uh, as usual, Hank made everyone laugh, even in that situation. So uh, it makes us think of him especially today. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the many gifts you have bestowed upon us, most especially for making you, us in your image and likeness with the ability to know and to love and to accomplish great things. We echo the words of David the prophet who said, I praise you, Lord, because I am so wonderfully made. Grant that just as the great Columbus used the talents he was given to accomplish great things, that each of us, according to our own vocation in this life, may serve you faithfully, serve our neighbor, so that one day we may receive the unfading crown of glory that you have promised to those who have been faithful. Amen. Thank you. Please rise as we retire the colors.
We've heard a few mentions of the children that are gathered here today. This group of children from the Calvary Baptist uh, Children's Learning Center is going to uh, sing a song for us. Before we close, um, Cameron Chandler is going to grace us with his beautiful voice and sing a uh, final uh, verse for us here today. Uh, but I would like to personally welcome everyone back to our corporate offices at J.P. Mascaro & Sons, 2650 Audubon Road. There are maps out here uh, if everyone, anyone hasn't been there or doesn't know how to get there uh, for a luncheon uh, that we provide for everyone that has been here at the event. So if you'll all stand, we'll sing God Bless America, we'll sing it through once, we'll sing it through twice, then we'll come back to the middle. <clears throat> Great job, kids. <laughs> Takes me back. this year and we'll see you next year.